so before we start right uh, can you tell me why should we not go for manual testing and why should we go for automation can anyone tell me this point more time consuming process okay repetitive task more manpower is needed so we are discussing a concept of manual versus automation in case the font size okay so one is uh, uh, more manpower okay repetitive. what else repetitive okay what else time consuming time consuming because mm -hmm. of regression testing we need to test more for regression for regression we need to test okay okay fine that's correct uh, what are you are you are saying right uh, it is time consuming because a uh, uh, manual tester will take more time than a tool right uh, manual tester uh, will take more time to execute execute the scripts or to execute the test cases test cases than tool okay this is correct and um, more manpower like oh, there is nothing but investment is required for human resource okay investment is required for human resources uh, and uh, other thing is uh, it is not accurate like the uh, manual testing is error prone right uh, time comes away manual testing is not accurate accurate uh, and uh, less reliable yes why it is not accurate and it is less reliable person can commit mistake when doing testing okay see basically uh, uh, let's say the person is very good at the, at the domain okay the person is very good at the domain uh, then he will understand uh, it properly and he is able to uh, execute it properly let's say for example a 3 years experience uh, guy is is working he, he is working on the application okay when a 3 years experience guy is working on the application his testing skills would be different and also when a 6 years guy or 8 8 years guy is working on application his testing skills would be different yes or no okay and other thing is uh, it's not uh, reliable for it all depends on that person's the tester's mindset if you uh, uh, like if he's not happy on that particular day right he may not test it properly and you, you may not get uh, defects right so all these things uh, all these things we need to consider uh, so when man when should we go for manual testing is yeah, manual testing is possible manual testing is ideal only when test cases are run are executed only once or twice okay when you are executing the test case only once or twice we have to go for manual testing and not for frequent repetition okay not for frequent repetition so this is a uh, one thing you need to understand okay okay uh the first thing uh, let me open okay i can want, want to discuss these points 
if you look at here right as i told you like uh, if a manual tester is working on application right it all depends on the experience of the person who is executing the test cases right if he's more ex experienced and he's having good domain knowledge then uh, his expertise would be good and he'll be able to identify more number of defects if he's a fresher right uh, his uh, testing skills would be different and he may not identify the defects so that means it is error prone and it is not reliable okay whereas automation right, it is a script right or tool is going to perform it so it is more reliable and uh, it's more time consuming and uh, and also uh, you have to invest on human resources uh, you need to pay the salaries for the employees right but it's automation right tools once you buy it right the tool will work on multiple environments okay and uh, it is much faster uh, when compared to manual approach and uh, i told you right manual testing is possible only when you you have to run the application only once or twice uh, not not more than that okay and uh, See, basically, when should we go for manual testing is manual testing is used for user to test the user friendliness of the application. Like, uh, for example, if you look at uh, like a Gmail, right? A Gmail, there are different uh, mail server, uh, mailing applications. Like you have Yahoo Mail, you have Gmail, uh, Rediff Mail, everything you have, right? But Gmail is more user friendly, right? Yeah, many people will use Gmail. Yes or no? Agree, disagree. Correct. Uh, the Gmail is more popular when compared to other mailing tool, mailing applications, right? That means a manual tester focus would be on improving the customer ex experience and user friendliness, not for checking the functionality. Okay. Whereas automation testing is not for testing the user friendliness or the customer experience. It is more on testing the functionality. Okay. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this or you can make a note of it. And once you're done, let me know. We'll go to the next point. We took print screen, sir. Okay, uh, you can go on mute. If you want to talk, you can unmute and talk. Okay, okay, fine. Good. Yeah. Uh, any questions here? No, right? Hello. I'm yes, tell me. Yeah, you are audible. Tell me. Yeah, which one? Uh, come. Automation testing is better or uh, manual testing is better? Uh, uh, these are the uh, criteria. Like if you have to execute a test case only once or twice, right? Uh, then the manual testing is good uh, because it takes a lot of time and effort in writing the script. Okay. The second thing is uh, like if your application need to be tested in only one environment. For example, you have to test it on Firefox browser or only Chrome browser, right? Then manual testing is good. Why? Because if you are testing on multiple environments, let's say you have to test on Firefox, Chrome, IE, Safari, right? Then yeah. you, you require multiple resources. Okay. Uh, both are required, actually. You cannot completely de depend on just a minute. There is a bell going on. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, sir, however, like, you know, we do have uh, compatible testing and manual testing as well. Like, you know, we do have compatible testing where like we check in different environments, how it's working and that. Right. Then it's a difference like for manual and automated. As you told me, like, you know, manual testing is used uh, only in one environment or like, you know, only in one test case. But however, like we do have this one, right? Compatibility testing, wherein like, you know, we can check in different environments like Mozilla or uh, Chrome, maybe uh, in Mac computers, we can check in uh, in those environments as well. You are talking on the manual side or on the automated side? Manual side, right? About manual testing itself. We we oh. have compatibility, right? Like very yeah. like checking different environments. Correct. We can test it, but how many resources you require for it? You require a good number of resources, right? Uh, yes. And also time, right? Uh, see, if one person is working on multiple environments, then he may take more time. Okay. So in that cases, we use automated, right? Correct. Why? Because you have to deliver the product faster to the market. Yes or no? See, for example, uh, WhatsApp has come uh, and uh, Telegram has also come, right? Many people use WhatsApp. Telegram and WhatsApp 
are almost the same functionality. In fact, Telegram features you have mo you get more number of features in Telegram when compared to WhatsApp. Yes or no? Agree? How many people use WhatsApp? <laughs> Bob, yeah, you have to go on mute. So how many people use WhatsApp? Almost all. Almost everybody uses WhatsApp, right? How many people use Telegram? No, I don't use. Very less people use Telegram, right? Because timing to the market is also important. See, the same, uh, same type of service, which are, it's coming first into the market, right? It will be more popular. So uh, that is the reason why uh, you need to automate your uh, scenario so that you can deliver quality products and also faster to the market. Okay. And the next question which they generally ask is what are the benefits of automation? Why did you do automation testing? Why did you automate your project means? These are the answers for it. Like you can say that it is fast. Why? Because a tool will execute the scripts much faster uh, than a manual tester uh, executing the test cases. Why? Because you need to understand the test cases and then execute it. Whereas to a script execution is always faster. It is reliable. Why it is reliable? Because in, in, in uh, if a manual tester, right, depending on his experience and domain uh, knowledge, right, the results will vary. Uh, whereas automation, right, uh, uh, it is always uh, same. You, since it is script is right, tool is executing the script, the results are always same. The other thing is reusable. What do you mean by reusable? Script can be used again. Correct. See, reusable can be two, two ways. For example, uh, what are the common functionalities? Let's say you have a login. Login functionality is required for every operation, right? The script can be reused for other test cases, okay? And the, similarly, once you develop the test case for one environment, let's say you are developing the test cases for Windows operating system and uh, Chrome browser, the same scripts can be used for Mac operating system and Safari browser. Okay? And that way it is reusable. You always accuracy, like how it improves accuracy means all the functional uh, functional part you are going to automate, right? Uh, and uh, machine can test, uh, there will not be a human errors, right? Uh, machine will always give you accurate uh, results and uh, it reduces the human power, human generated errors. And uh, when should we go for automation is for uh, whenever you have data driven testing, like you need to test the same functionality with multiple sets of data. For example, I'll give you one example, like you, you have an insurance application, okay? Uh, for insurance application, right? For example, if your age is uh, 30 years, the premium is uh, premium is one amount. If your age is 35 years, the premium is one amount. If the age is 36, it is one amount. If the age is 37, the premium is one amount, right? That means from, uh, from age 18 to 100, you have to test for different premium values. So such type of things, right? Then uh, automation is much, uh, faster and we should go for automation whenever you have to support execution of repeated test cases like uh, testing uh, the premium for age group from 18 to 100 with different premium values you are able to understand my point right for example if you take lic right whenever you are making everybody is aware of lic right yes or no lic anybody know lic or not life insurance corporation yes sir so lic what will happen you know well, depending on the age of the person, right? Premium will change. So, so that means you have to test. You have to test the premium for different ages. So, whenever you have a such type of scenario, right? Better to go with uh, uh, automation on the manually. It is very uh, tedious uh, process. Okay. So, just take a screenshot and make a note of it, and we'll go to the next point. Okay. Uh, so, other benefits is other benefits is. Uh, that's what support execution of repeated test case we already discussed parallel execution parallel execution means what do you mean by parallel execution is let's say you have 100 test cases okay if you are executing this 100 test cases on a single machine let's say it will take around three hours of time okay if you are if you are uh, splitting these 100 test cases in three systems like 35 in one system 35 in one system and 30 in other system right the same uh, uh, testing can be performed in one hour rather than three hours. Why? Because you are using three machines, right? So other benefits of automation is parallel execution and encourages unattended execution. So what generally people do, you know, during the daytime, they develop the test scripts and nighttime, they execute it. 
so you are almost testing 25 24 hours right or let's say 8 hours and 8 hours 16 hours you are you are indirectly testing the application so unattended testing is also while while leaving the office what you do is you run the regression suit uh, you ex you start the regression suit and leave the office by the morning you come right you get the results how many passed and how many failed it saves time time and money how it saves time on by parallel execution it saves time for compatibility testing, what happens, you know, you need to employ each resource for one environment. Here, this can be done with uh, using the one tool itself. You need not employ multiple testers. Okay. Uh, are we good? You want to make a note of this? So interview questions will be something like this. Uh, uh, so they'll ask you like, um, can, can you tell me about your roles and responsibilities? They'll ask you and then I ask you then uh, uh, how, what is the percentage of automation and what is the percentage of manual in your project? Then I'll ask you what are the drawbacks of manual testing or they'll ask you something like this. Why did you shift from manual to automation? Okay, what are the advantages of automation testing? So these are the things you need to say. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. 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 Fine. So, other thing is, uh, I I told you right. There will be something like uh, engagement manager who is going to do the feasibility study. Okay. Uh, whether it is feasible to, uh, to take that project or not. So there is a, there is something called as cost of the test automation. What do you mean by cost of test automation means? See, cost of test automation means that uh, the test automation cost cost is nothing but cost of the tool, okay, and uh, cost labor cost for script creation okay, and labor cost for script maintenance so someone when asking right which one is better if man is manual better or automation uh, better I mean this will tell you if the if this cost is lesser than, if the automation cost is lesser than manual cost, right? Then go for automation. If the manual cost is cheaper than automation, the company will think like this only, whichever is cheaper, whichever, whichever is high quality, it will, it will use it. So in, in any case, in any case, automation is cheaper. Why because, why because let's say uh, you, you are working on a banking application. Okay, let's say there's a requirement. Uh, let's say there's a requirement that you have two tests. Okay, you have only two tests. Uh, like these two tests has to be executed every week. Okay, uh, every week you have to execute these two tests. Example, I'm for two years you say. Okay, you have two tests which has to be executed for every week. So what is the cost? Two tests. Every week, how many weeks in a year? 52 weeks, okay, 50, uh, 52 weeks are there. And uh, generally in a year, how many how many times you are going to execute? One not four times you are going to execute, right? Per year, okay. So now you have to compare how much, uh, this is nothing but if you look at the, uh, since you are going with Selenium, right? It is an open source. There is no licensing fee for it. So here the cost is zero. Okay. And uh, two scripts, how much time it will take to develop? Okay. It will take, uh, say, one month max. So only one month of uh, execute, uh, manual uh, effort is required for developing the scripts, right? And uh, maintenance, you can trigger it automatically, right? You can create one batch file and it will automatically trigger. So, yeah. so in, in any way you compare, right? Automation is always cheaper then compared to manual testing okay for bigger projects so that is the reason why uh, there are more number of automation jobs in the market when compared to manual testing is it clear 
yes you uh, they will ask you like uh, when when you will go for a uh, or automation means you have to say all these points like basically uh, uh, what are the benefits of automation you have to say and this is also one of the important factor the cost of uh, test automation this cost should be cheaper than manual cost then only companies will implement it 90 ideally 99% of the times right uh, the manual cost is more expensive when auto than automation cost okay now uh, there are many tools which are available in the market right like uh, all these tools are used uh, there are two types of automation right functional automation and non functional automation you are aware of this right functional testing means what checking the functionality of the application right non functional means it is related to performance testing and security testing right so my our job, our course curriculum focuses on functional testing only so if you search in google if you search in google or like uh, what are the different functional tools available in the market uh you you find selenium and uh, you find sahi you uh, and you find ibm rft you find uft renorex addressing the stores ka what is in test complete these are the eight tools like 90% of the industry is using these eight tools okay you can search in google or you can search in job site site search uh, selenium and see number of jobs okay uh search uh, for uh, ibm rft and see number of jobs or we can do it uh, like this are okay what we can do is search selenium okay and uh, leave about the salary and leave about the location search how many jobs are there close to 9000 jobs are there 9838 jobs are there same thing we'll go to um, uh, rft i don't know whether you will get rft or not one second rational functional test rft is from ibm okay search for it see only two jobs are there okay so people will not learn a course if there are only two jobs right and uh, we'll go with one more tool called as unified functional test i'll go with uft i run 500 jobs are there in uh, 420 jobs are there in uft next is tosca run 500 jobs are there in tosca so which is if you look at the different tools which are available right selenium is becoming very popular right there should be some reasons why it is becoming popular why people in the industry are using this right? there should be some reasons otherwise why it will become popular right so If you look at here, why Selenium is popular means it is free. There is no licensing fee. You are company is not is need not invest any money in purchasing the tool. It's an open source. Open source means you can even customize the existing project. It has a large community, like large user base. It's very popular. Many people are using Selenium. So whenever you have some issues, right, yeah, you will be getting help from the community also. The third one is. like it is browser compatible that means the same script once you design the script for our right the same script will work in firefox it will work in chrome it will work in internet explorer it will work in safari okay and the same script is also platform compatible that means it will work in windows it will work in mac and also it will work in linux operating system okay and uh, you have a flexibility to write in a programming language of your choice means it's not mandatory for example uft right you have to learn vb script okay so there is no restriction here if you know java you can write scripts in java if you know c sharp you can write scripts in c sharp and uh, if if you know ruby you can write in ruby if you know python you can write it in python if you know javascript you can write in javascript if you know perl you can write it in perl like irrespective like whatever language you know right any 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 person will be at least familiar with one language if you want to come into it industry so that that flexibility is there like it supports multiple languages and always there are updates uh, updates from the selenia uh, uh, company uh, like the regular and it also supports distributed testing any idea what is distributed testing any idea what is distribution testing Uh, is it like you know multiple users can access 
uh, the same. Which is like parallel execution, right? You are distributing your test cases across the environments. Okay, that is possible with Selenium Grid. Uh, did anybody know this term Selenium Grid? Okay, fine, no problem. Just make a note of this point. Why should I learn Selenium? They'll ask you this question, like why did you choose Selenium as a tool? Uh, why, do, why did your company choose Selenium for test automation? They will ask you, then you should say this point. Like Selenium is an open source, like it has a large uh, helping community and uh, it has a flexibility to write scripts in a programming language of your choice. And uh, once the script is, uh, is uh, created, it can be executed in multiple browsers and multiple operating systems. And there are a regular up, uh, updates on Selenium and also it supports distributed environment. Sir, uh, what about six point has fresh and regulated repository developments? That means like frequent updates on the Selenium, like uh, you get multiple versions, multiple versions of Selenium, like Selenium, uh, like 3.5, 3.6, 3.7. There are regular updates uh, uh, on the tool. Oh, okay. So you are all, 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 always up to date. Like, uh, for example, uh, the last update, see number only you have the latest update. Okay. Uh, if you want the previous release, see, click on previous releases. See how many versions are there? See 4.6, 4.5, 4.4, 4.3, .4, like frequently they update. Okay. Look at here, like, uh, alpha, this came in September, 2019. Okay, and then this has come in Jan, Jan 2020, and this has come in March. Okay, uh, this has come in uh, May, May 2020, and uh, in uh, November it has come. There are frequent updates on the tool. Whenever they, there's a new thing, right? They, they are update. This has come in February 2021, and now it has come in March 2021. It has come in April, April 2021. So in one month only they have updated. It has uh, come so in one question like does it get updated automatically or do we need to install we, a new version we need to install or we need to install it will not get updated automatically okay we need to install so whenever you you are talking about selenium right you should know what are the different components of selenium uh the uh all these four components together is called as a selenium suit like selenium id rc web driver and grid together is called as selenium suit okay uh, and uh, RC was merged with WebDriver, uh, and the name given to it is Selenium 2.0. Okay, then later they have done some improvements, and then they have launched Selenium 3, and now the, in the market the latest is Selenium 4. Okay, uh, and uh, see uh, each one is a separate. Uh, it works like a separate tool, even though we see it as a components, right? Each one has its own use. For example, if you take an ID, right? ID is click and drag only. Like basically, uh, nobody is using ID and RC in the industry. Okay, uh, because the architecture of RC, RC is completely different with the web driver. We'll discuss about these points later. But just make a note of it, right? When you are talking about Selenium, right? There are four components. One is called as RC. Sorry, ID, RC, web driver, and grid. The latest is Selenium four. And the next important thing you need to understand is uh, they'll ask you right uh, what uh, what is a prerequisite for automation what are the prerequisite for starting automation right so basically what is the eligibility criteria? Uh, for example, if you want to get an I IT job, right, at least you should pass a degree, right? Uh, like whether it is a BTEC, BSc, or BCom, right? At least you should have a degree with you, yes or no? There is some eligibility criteria, right? Okay. Uh, like uh, similarly, uh, what is a prerequisite uh, for starting automation? When we cannot start uh, automation directly, once a build is given to you, right, you can uh, you cannot start automation directly. There is some prerequisite there are some criteria the the build should meet what is a build anything which is deployed the application which is deployed by the uh, de developer or the release manager into the qa environment so that testing team can start executing the, the test cases is nothing but the qa build okay first thing is test environment stability that means 
environment should be stable right if the environment is not stable if the elements are keep on changing right then it is not possible for automation okay second thing is should have permission to access application components that means you should have the privileges to access the application right for example i am taking amazon okay i'm taking amazon site for example i need to have the login to to login right i need to have a valid credit card to make the payments right uh, for example if you want i need to have access to this thing today's deals to the otherwise you cannot automate right the second thing is you should have permission to access the application okay and next thing is we have to execute the steps manually if manually it is working then only you should go for automation if manual itself is now not working right then it is not possible to automate okay execute the See, first of all, you need to execute the test case manually. You should know what is the expected output. Then only you can prepare the script. Okay. And next one is this is very important. Test data you should have, right? For example, you are testing a bank, a banking application. You should have a valid account number. Without having the valid account number, right? You cannot test the application, right? You should have a valid credit card to test the credit card functionality, right? So we need to determine the test data in order to do execute this. And there should be an option to reset master data. For example, uh, you, are, you are testing a banking application. You are testing fund transfer, okay? Uh, and let's say there's a balance of a uh, thousand rupees in your account. Okay, you, you are doing two transactions, 500 and 500. So after this, what will happen? The balance will become zero, right? So once the balance becomes zero, the same script will fail. Why? Because it will say that there is no sufficient fund balance, right? That, that is not the issue with the application, right? The issue is with the uh, resetting the master data. So before executing the test cases, right, you should have an option to reset the data, okay? Otherwise, even though application is working fine, your scripts will fail, okay? And proper naming conventions you need to use. Next thing is you need to prioritize your test cases. Is this clear? Whatever I'm talking. Any questions in this? No, sir. Okay. Just make a note of it once done with me. So environment to disable, you'd have permission. So they'll ask you this question. What is the prerequisite for automation? When do you start your automation? When do you start with your automation means environment should be stable. You should have permission to access the components. And uh, initially, at least uh, your manual test case should be working and you should know what is the expected output. You should have the proper test data. You should have an option to reset your uh, master test data. Uh, you should have your proper naming conventions for easy maintenance and you should prioritize your test cases, okay? Next thing is, you cannot automate each and every test case. There is a criteria for selecting an automation test case. So what is the criteria for selecting the automation test case? Okay. Test case having highest priority.
okay test case which is having the highest priority how can you say this test case is having the highest priority what is the uh, how do you identify them anything is having which is having a financial transaction involved like for example you are, you are making some payments okay anything which is related to payments right then sh that should be automated okay and uh, it should be part of it should be part of your sanity test or smoke suit smoke or sanity test it should be part of smoke and test cases which are data oriented data oriented means same test case we need to repeat with multiple sets of data okay same test case which we need to repeat it with multiple sets of data test cases which are taking long time to execute manually Okay, test cases are taking long time to execute and uh, other one is the when there is a need to execute it on multiple browsers and also multiple environments okay are we good until here like this is the criteria for every test case you cannot select for automation okay there is a criteria for selecting the test cases for automation it should have the highest priority how can you say how to identify highest priority test case means which is having any financial transactions involved it should be part of smoke or sanity test test cases which are having which need, which are data oriented same test case need to be tested with multiple sets of data and also if the test case is taking longer time with manually those things we need to automate is it clear who created selenium or who developed the selenium do you know the name of the person? Hmm? Don't Sorry? know, sir. No, don't know. I okay. Don't know. okay. Done with this six points. The yes. next question would be uh, they'll ask, they'll not directly ask what is the criteria for selecting automation. They'll ask something like that. Uh, how the question will be is like, uh, uh, they'll ask you like what is the percentage of manual and what is the percentage of automation they, they'll ask you this question uh, then you will say that uh, in my current project there are uh, let's say around 500 test cases i have uh, in that like uh, 400 we have automated and 100 uh, we have not automated you'll say then they'll ask you on what basis you have decided that you have automated the 400 test cases what is the criteria for automating this 400 test case means this should be the answer the most important is data oriented okay highest priority okay which is part of smoke and also multiple environments this is the most priority if you have these answers right then they will be impressed with your answer okay next thing is who developed selenium whenever i'm saying selenium right there are four components right like id rc a web driver and and the grid right so selenium was developed by a person called as Jason, Jason Agins in the year 2004. Why did you get this name Selenium? Anybody know what is the reason uh, we have this name Selenium? Why did you choose Selenium uh, by a company called as ThoughtWorks? This company and the person was Jason in the year 2004. He started selenium the name the initial name given to it was uh, javascript test runner but later they have a name any idea why did you they give this name okay and uh, grid uh, grid was developed by by patrick and uh, yeah what is the purpose of the grid is for parallel execution parallel execution in multiple environments okay and the most important is selenium web driver
This is developed by a person called as Simon. His name was Simon Stewart. Okay. Uh, in which year did he develop? In the year 2006. Where he did he develop? He was working for Google. The reason why it became very popular to actually. Okay. So why did you get that name Selenium? Any idea? Can you guess? Why did you put that name Selenium? If you look at this point, selenium has been shown to counter react the toxicity of the heavy metals such as these things. Okay, mercury, inorganic mercury. What does selenium will do is it will remove mercury from the body. Okay, how it is related to automation testing? Okay. See, basically, UFT older the, the UFT full form is Unified Functional Test. The older name given to UFT was QTP. QTP stands for Quick Test Professional. Okay, this Quick Test Professional was developed by a company called as Mercury. Okay, this Quick Test Professional was developed by a company called as Mercury. Later, it was earned by HP and later it was owned by yeah now they have completely changed it now you will not even find the details so why did they put this name you know they want to remove mercury uh, company mercury from the testing uh, world so that is the reason why they have used the name selenium what is what does selenium do selenium removes uh, mercury from the body right similarly they want to remove the, the its rival company mercury from the market that is the reason why they have used Selenium. Getting this point, right? What, uh, what, what, why did they use the name Selenium? Okay. Fine. Uh, so, next thing is we need to understand Selenium grid, which is also uh, very useful. Uh, high level only, we'll see later, we'll see in detail. Uh, the other important component, which is Selenium grid. Okay. When are, when are the people are talking about selenium grid, right? It is used for executing. Uh, basically, what are the advantages is it will allow running test on multiple browsers and multiple environment. Or what can we say? Enables, yeah. Enables simultaneous running. It's running in multiple environments multiple browsers and environments. okay multiple browsers and environments okay there is a there is a concept called as hub and node we'll see this what is a hub is like a server and node is like a client okay hub is like a server and node is like a client Fine. I want to give you uh, some assignment. You need to identify the differences between selenium and selenium and QTP in the next class. Okay. What are the differences or what are the advantages or what are the differences between selenium and QTP? You take it as a okay. okay. Fine. Uh, this is what about selenium is. So basically, it is developed by a company called as Startworks. Uh, Jason Hagin started it. In the year 2004, and grid is developed by a person called as Patrick. Purpose of grid is parallel execution. And Selenium web driver is developed by a person called as Simon Stewart in the year 2006 at Google. Okay, what is the purpose of Selenium grid is to execute test cases in multiple browsers and multiple environments, and it uses a concept called as hub and node. You should tell me what are the differences between Selenium and QTP. Okay. <laughs>